Yes, hello everybody, welcome to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And obviously I didn't get round to doing one this weekend. And then on Monday, I was working, so I didn't get a chance to do one. And then yesterday on Tuesday, I was thinking, right, I'll do one of these. And then it all just kicked off, didn't it? The last 48 hours have been mad. There has been, and I've counted them because I've had to write them all down. 10 links and I've probably missed a couple on that as well that I need to talk about here on the show so I'm going to do it a little bit differently normally I talk about each link for around you know three to four minutes and I genuinely believe if I do that I'll be here all day well if there's 10 it'll be 30 40 minutes right so what I'm going to do I'm just going to talk about them all for maybe about a minute, something like that. I'm, I'm also going to make it look a little bit different as well, just to save time on the edit. Um, but yeah, strap yourselves in because it has kicked off over the last, like I say, 48 hours or so. Um, but right, there's obviously been a lot of chat surrounding Sander Burge this last few weeks, really. There was a lot of chat about Manchester United being interested in the Norwegian midfielder, but it turns out that Fulham have pipped them to the post. I'm not sure how serious the Man United chat evidently was. If Man United wanted him, they would have properly gone for him, right? Um, but as it stands, Fulham look like they have won the race to sign Sander Berg, according to Ad Jones, who of course is the local journal at The Athletic, who covers Burnley, has said that Fulham are closing in on completing a deal to sign Burnley midfielder Sander Berg. The fee is in the region of around £25 million. Now, obviously, on screen is my regurgitation of Andy's tweet, but Andy did say on his own tweet that it was an initial fee of around £20 million, rising to around 25 whether that be through bonuses, whatever, or just instalments, I'm not sure. Um, personal terms already agreed as well, according to Andy. And I did see a further tweet from Fabrizio and he said that um, he's had his medical and things like that. So I would suspect that this one's pretty much, well, personal terms are done and, it's, and the fee, the clubs have agreed a fee pretty much. So it's looking like it is just a case of waiting for as and when this one will be announced. But yeah, it's obviously a shame to see Sander leave. I think every Burnley fan wanted to keep him, but let's remember he's not played a single minute this season and we've coped without him so far. We all expected him to leave, but I don't think it's going to affect us too much. Like, don't get me wrong, if he stayed, he would have been brilliant and he, he would have dragged us over the line if and when needed. But we've caught without him so far. So based on that, it's not something that I'm overly annoyed about. And we all expected him to, to get back to the Premier League or, or, an, or another big league in Europe. Uh, and it's looking like he will do just that. I did expect him to go to a club maybe within the top 10. I mean, Fulham will have ambitions of that this season. I'm sure they will. Um, but uh, yeah, Sanderberg looking like he is off. But again, it's something we all expected, isn't it? Uh, up next, uh, Johan berg -Gubmanson. Now, he's only just rejoined, uh, but it turns out that he is close to moving to Saudi Arabia. This one came as a bit of a shock, as I'm sure it did for you guys as well, but I did hear about this um, before the weekend, actually, because I remember when he scored the goal, I remember thinking... Oh, you know, that'd be a nice way to sign out. Obviously, there's only certain things that um, when I get this sort of that thing that I, I can actually say. Um, but yeah, it turns out that Johan berg Gudmundsson is looking uh, like he'll be leaving Burnley after just coming back for six weeks. And it's a shame as well um, because I genuinely was gutted when he left and I genuinely thought, you know, he, he can do a job in the Championship. He showed that in his cameo at the weekend against Cardiff, was only on for around, what, 25, 30 minutes and obviously played well and, uh, and scored the goal. Um, but yeah, uh, looking like Johan Berg, I, I, I'm laughing, like I'm obviously not happy about this one, um, but it's it's just so bizarre, like he's it, just joined and I do remember when I heard it, at first I was like, nah, no chance, but obviously the guy that I talked to is, is, is very, very good. Um, so yeah, and then Sasha picked it up, um, I think he picked it up like late last night, that's when it came out. Um, so obviously at that point, then it then it can it, it can be tweeted by myself, which is obviously again you'll just see my regurgitation of Sasha's tweet. Um, so yeah, Johan berg is close to a move to Saudi Arabia. Um, from what I believe is he's doubling his wages. You know what Saudi Arabia like? They have money to throw around. Um, so I know there'll be some people disappointed, especially with sort of like the morality issue. 
playing in Saudi Arabia, but he's thinking of his family. Um, not that he's on the breadline exactly. I, I respect that, but no matter what walk of life you're in, you want more. Money. And whether you're happy with that or you believe in that sort of thing or, or you're disappointed, that's a different debate. But yeah. Looking like Johan is leaving Burnley just six weeks after he's rejoined, and I just find that absolutely astonishing. I really, really do. Um, another one out the door, apologies, there's going to be a lot of this, is Amin Al-Dakil. Now, it's reported that he will be going to Germany. He's got a move lined up again. This isn't a regurgitation. This is actually a tweet. I heard this a few days ago. Then with all the links coming out today, I thought, you know what? I'll actually put something out there myself that I've heard. Um, and it's from the good source as well. So I was very confident in it. Um, and then later on today, I, as you can see there on the underneath the picture, I tweeted this at 10.49am. Uh, Sasha then tweeted it himself at around 7pm. So Sasha picked it up later on, called it an exclusive, very cheekily. Um, but Sasha then did pick it up later on. Um, so again, it Obviously, he's he's very well in with all the agents and stuff. Is Sasha a bit like Fabrizio? Um, and yeah, I, I, get, I guess I guess people will have more trust in Sasha than than, than somebody like me, um, some middle aged man sat in his his spare room. Um, but yeah, I think Sasha's tweet pretty much confirms what I said earlier in the day. I'm disappointed with this one, you know. I'm not, he, he gets some stick, and I'm not really sure why. Well, I am I, I am sure why. He, he had a poor run in the Premier League when he was being played out of position and because he was being played at right back, if I remember rightly, and he was poor. He did look out of depth in the Premier League, but again, he wasn't playing in his favourite position. When he played in the Championship, I thought he looked quite assured. I actually think this guy's got a high ceiling and I do think we'll see him playing for some big clubs in years to come. I know a lot of you will disagree with that because I've already seen all that on social media, but I think we'll, we'll, we'll live to regret this one. I think he's got a high ceiling, but He's definitely out of his depth in the Premier League at the minute. So maybe a move to Germany in the Bundesliga, where the league's probably a little bit less physical, a little bit less demanding, might suit him. But yeah, I mean, Aldakiel, another one who is out of the door. Them last three, by the way, Aldakiel, JBG and Sander are all 99% guaranteed to happen unless something changes within the next day or so. Um, I would doubt it, but... Obviously, we all know how they how things can change. From what I believe, Sanderberg, JBG, and Aldakiel all missed training today as they're all sorting moves out. So, yeah, we will see what happens with that one. But it sounds like them lot are all pretty much guaranteed to be leaving. Uh, next one, this one's just a rumour, so don't panic just yet. But again, it's Sasha. Um, and even though he sometimes calls things exclusives when he's a few hours late, um, we all know he's, he's quite reliable. Um, but he believes that Manuel Benson is about to leave Burnley Football Club. Now, to be fair, Sasha has said this before. And what I will say is the guy that I talked to hasn't mentioned anything about Benson. Now, that's not saying that this is wrong. It's not saying that it's right. But I've heard nothing on on Benson. But Sasha believes Manuel Benson is about to leave Burnley FC this summer. There are talks on a permanent move are currently taking place with huge interest with Leeds, United, Sunderland and Norwich. If Jonathan Rowe leaves the club are also interested. He reckons personal terms won't be a problem. Manuel would hurt because of the sentiment attached to it. He was fantastic in that promotion season. But I also do still feel like he can do a job. There's obviously something that we're not aware of, right? Because Vincent didn't really like him and only really played him off the bench, even in the championship winning season. Obviously, we didn't see much of him last season. And then Scott hasn't played him yet this season. So there's something I feel that we not know that we don't know about. Maybe he's a rubbish trainer. Maybe he's got a bad attitude in training. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. What I would like us to do is not sell him to somebody in this division, especially Leeds or Sunderland. Leeds, number one, I have nothing against Leeds, you know, a lot of people do, um, but I wouldn't want him to sell, us to sell to them simply because, um, simply because obviously they're our promotion rivals and I do think Sunderland, I don't think they'll be up there with us. I don't think they'll be knocking on the door of, of winning the league, which I think we will be. Obviously, ask me that again when the transfer window closes. If we sell everybody, then obviously we won't. Um, but they may be knocking on the doors of the playoffs and, and selling somebody like Benson to them to improve their squad could push them up a little bit further up the league. So ideally, none of them two. Ideally, not Norwich either, because I don't want to see him play against us. If we're going to sell him, sell him to Europe. But I would like to keep Benson, because I still think he can do a job off the bench. But again, 
it's not overly going to affect our starting eleven massively from this season, just like the rest of these that I've already spoken about won't. Aldakil, JBG and Sander. JBG obviously came on against Cardiff, as I've mentioned, but other than that, there's been no minutes there for anybody this season. So it's not going to affect us too much, but now I am starting to worry a little bit about the depth if some of these players keep leaving. Um, another one, a bit more positive, this one, you'll be happy to hear. Um, there was a lot of chat about Vitinho potentially leaving. Now, what I will say is, again, I never heard anything on this, but I did see all these reports come out of nowhere, by the way, from Brazil. Now, I have not a distrust, but these sort of sources I always find can sometimes get it wrong or, or whatever. Like You see all these sources in Turkey, for example, constantly saying a load of rubbish, and it sometimes makes me... You know, a little bit sceptical of of some of these um, random sources that you see, and and then you know these random papers or websites you've never heard of just suddenly saying, "Oh, this guy because he's from this country," and everyone suddenly believes it. But a lot of South American stuff came out about Vitinho saying that he's going back to Brazil, which I also thought was weird because it's a backward step in my opinion. I th well, I'm obviously going to say that I'm obviously going to be loyal to the you know our country and our, our leagues, but I do think it'd be a backward step if he went back to Brazil. Uh, but yeah, Darren Anderson of the Mirror, he said that reports linking Vitinho with a move back to Brazil and uh, bought a four definitely butchered that. Apologies, Vitinho, if you're watching this, which definitely not, um, appear wide of the mark. So that's good news. He's obviously been somebody that's played a lot of minutes for us this season. I think he's come on absolute leaps and bounds in the last two years since he's been with us. He was obviously good in the championship winning season, but there was also some areas of his game that he could have worked on and then again I feel like in the Premier League just like everyone last, was last season and probably was a little bit out of the out of his depth but this season so far has looked absolutely brilliant and I do think he's one of the first names on the team sheet now so I would be gutted genuinely gutted if we saw Vitinho but the good news is surrounding Vitinho is that the reports appear to be wide of the mark so fingers crossed that Darren Anderson is correct on that one but as I've said I've heard nothing so that always gives me a bit of confidence when, I, when I've heard nothing on it. Um, just going to more positive news now and I am going to talk about some incomings again before some more potential potential outgoings. Um, Burnley are interested in Jeremy Sarmiento, but we are battling it out with Sheffield United, according to Alan Nixon. Both clubs are hoping to make the deal for the Brighton man permanent, and I think it will be around five to seven million pounds the clubs are chatting about. Again, this is another one that I did hear about a few days ago from a couple of sources. So when I saw Nixon report it, I know some people sit there and say Nixon is ridiculously unreliable, um, but this is something I heard as well, so I'm pretty certain he's spot on. And since this, by the way, since this tweet that Nixon put out, and as again, you can see my regurgitated um, tweet of that tweet, um, it has come out that Leeds are apparently looking at him as well. Like, if, if it's between us and Sheffield United, I do think that we win the battle comfortably. Like comfortably is probably a bit much, but I do think we win the battle um, between Sheffield, us and Sheffield United. But when Leeds come in, I, st I still think we will because... I think Leeds look a little bit up in the air at the minute, less so than us. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about this one. Um, would I rather keep Benson? I mean, I like both. Um, I, that's probably a different debate. Probably, yeah. But again, just going back to what I said about Benson, there's a there's clearly something that we're not knowing, knowing about with a couple of managers now not really being fond of him and stuff. So hopefully this guy comes in, you know, if we get it over the line and hits the ground running because um, we're going to need somebody to step into Benson's shoes if we need that sort of like depth on the bench and stuff like that. But this guy's got a high ceiling. I know he's highly thought of over in Brighton. Um I spoke to a couple of Brighton fans recently about him when I heard about it, and they said he's probably not there yet, but he's got a very high ceiling and a high future, So uh, and a, you know, a big future ahead of him. So fingers crossed that you know we can see that at Burnley. Another incoming is Hannibal. Um, there it is. Andy Jones uh, tweeted this one. Uh, Hannibal Medgebury, um, Burnley interested in signing Manchester United midfielder. Still plenty of work to do, says Andy on this one, um, to secure any deal for the 21. I'm surprised he's only 21. I feel like he's been around for years. Uh, loan plus obligation or permanent deal, both options on the table. So it's looking like Burnley trying to get this done. Feels like this is kind of like a Sander replacement, but it's obviously I'm not saying he's as good as that, um, but it kind of feels like he's a Sander replacement. Um, they are quite different players to be fair, but he's obviously reinforcements in midfield. Um, 
he, he's okay. Like I, I like him. I, I, I would, I do want this to happen. Um, I remember him playing against us for Birmingham a couple of years ago in the championship winning season, and he was the most infuriating bastard that I've ever seen on a football pitch. He was winding me up no end. Obviously, he sticks out like a sore thumb with hair hairdo like that. And then he was rolling around on the floor and things like that and whinging about a lot of things and stuff to the referee and stuff like that. But he actually played okay in that game and he stood out as Birmingham's best player. Okay, it was a poor Birmingham side, admittedly, but he did stand out as Birmingham's best player in that game. And I think he played... Well, I know he played against us for Manchester United last season. I think he started in the game at the turf. He may have come off the bench. I can't remember. I'm pretty certain he started. And he kind of coasted through that game. But again... I was playing in the Premier League for Manchester United. I think he'll be a good player in the Championship. And he's one of them that people immediately think, oh, he's a bit of a prick. I don't really want him. Ashley Barnes was a bit of a prick and he was our prick. And I think this guy, he'll be one of them that you hate to play against but love on your team. So I would be happy with this one. And yeah, according to Andy Jones, um, it's, there's a lot of work still to do on the deal. But again, it's another one that I'd heard about a, a few days ago, and it sounds like we have been trying to do it for a couple of days. Uh, Fabrizio also picked this tweet up as well, um, this story up, sorry, uh, and said that we are looking at him. Um, but yeah, looking like we are looking at him, and it, and it would be good to get this one done, but it sounds like there's, there's still quite a bit of work to do, unfortunately. But fingers crossed we can get it done. Um, Unfortunately, back to the potential outgoings. Um, Han Noah Masengo. This one would be annoying. I know he's not played too much. He has looked okay in his cameos uh, when coming off the bench against Luton and Cardiff. Um, but I can't. The, the thing that would annoy me with this one is I feel like he's been very patient at Burnley. He's adhered himself to the fans by you know touring the town on his Instagram and stuff like that. Like little things like that might seem trivial, but they go a long way to fans. And it's 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 the patience thing for me. I feel like he just sat on the bench last season, just got his head down in training, worked hard, and then it seems like this season he was going to start maybe getting a chance to play more games. And then just to ship him off at this stage would be infuriating. But according to Lequeep, um, Burnley and Auxerre are in talks over a loan deal for Han Normasengo, who is 23. He's obviously older than Hannibal. Um, so I'm not sure where this leaves Han Normasengo, if we're bringing Hannibal in and then loaning him out, it might be a case of his time at Burnley. Um, could be coming to an end after that loan. But um, obviously, this has come from Lequeep. The tweet that you can see on your screen now is get French football news. Obviously, I wouldn't believe them too much if it was just them, but they are, like I said, sourcing Lequeep in it. And Lequeep, I know I've said, can be hit and miss quite a bit. Um, on this channel, and they can, but I was doing some research earlier today when I saw this because somebody did comment saying, but it's Lequeep, and I was like, yeah, fair enough, but they can be hit and miss, but when I did some research, they broke Hanno Masengo to Burnley, they broke uh, Maxime Esteve to Burnley, they broke um, some other ones as well, I can't remember, um, Asenyon, they broke that, um, they, they did get some things wrong, Um Benjamin Mendy, uh, apparently we were looking at him according to them uh, last year or the year before, I can't remember. I mean, we, may, we may well have been looking at him, um, but obviously nothing materialised on that. Um, but yeah, according to their report, um, Burley and Oxair are in talks regarding a season-long loan. Um, Oxair are now back in League One and at this time are hoping to stay there. Uh, that apparently they got their campaign off to an ideal start with a 2-1 uh, victory over Nice. I bet that was nice. Um, sorry. Um, but, yeah, it, I'm not sure where this leaves Masengo. I would have liked to see him get more minutes this season. I would have liked this to have been his breakout season. Um, but, yeah, probably want to keep an eye on because I've probably been a little bit unfair on Lequeep. I think they, when it comes to the players, and especially the French players, obviously, uh, they tend to do quite well, as my research um, showed me. Um a couple of other big ones now. Like, this one would obviously... Uh, affect our starting eleven quite quite a lot. Um, there's been a lot of talk about O'Shea, so obviously this is nothing new. Um, but according to Johnny Phillips from Sky, um, you might recognise him, that's him there. He reckons that Wolves have now made a firm offer for Burnley centre-back Dara O'Shea. Obviously, there's been a lot of news surrounding Dara with Brentford and then Ipswich came into it last night. I mean, they were looking at him before Ipswich, but then apparently he turned around and said he wanted Brentford. Um, so Ipswich took a step back, um, but then Ipswich tried again last night and apparently they, they were looking at making a bit of 10 million quid. I'd be surprised if if they got him for 10 million quid. I think it would be closer to 20, you know, 15, 20, something like that. Um, I would 
say 2025, but I'd, I would have expected us to get a bit more than an initial fee of 20 for Sanderberg. So 15 as an as an initial fee would probably do it um, for Burnley, to be fair, with Dora. I would like a bit more, especially as I do think he's he's, he's our starting defender now alongside Maxime Esteve, in my opinion. Um, he's, he's looked very good in the last couple of games in the Championship, obviously the first two games. Um, yes, he was hit and miss last season, especially with his lapses in concentration, but he did get better as the season went on. And I would be disappointed to see him leave, um, but I understand that centre-back is a position that we are very, very stacked in. Um, so, yeah, um, nothing concrete on this one, really. Um, apparently, there's been no official bids. There's just been, like, chats and, and stuff like that. This is what I'm getting. Obviously, the, the, the tweet on your screen says different, um, although he doesn't say official bid. He just says offer. I don't know if he's paraphrasing or what I'm not sure but as far as I'm aware there's been no official bid or anything yet but to be fair that was a couple of days ago when I spoke to somebody but I, I do expect us to lose Dora um, but I don't want to but I guess we'll just have to wait and see with that one uh, and finally finally from me um, Valt Veghorst now there's a lot of noise surrounding Veghorst as you can see on your screen now all from the Turkish media I do not trust the Turkish media <laughs> At all. Not one bit do I trust any source within the Turkish media. Um, but there's a lot of noise surrounding Trabzon Spore. Um, I some of the articles that you can see on your screen now, obviously they're all in Turkish, so unless you're Turkish, um, you're not gonna understand them. But um, some of these I've clicked on them, I've translated them. Some of these are saying apparently um Trabzon Spore have, have have had a bid accepted of four million euros. Uh, another one said Valtbeg also has turned around and and told Burnley that he wants to play for Trabzon Spore. Um, as far as I am aware, he will be leaving, but he'll be going to Ajax. Um, that was from the same sources that said, you know, the things that I've already spoken about and the things that are out there now. It's such a mad couple of days. Obviously, like I said, 10, 10 stories there that I've spoken about. I've probably missed another one as well. I've probably missed some. Like, look, I've, that, we're at 22 minutes already on this now. So, And that's me doing it very, very quickly. So it's, it's, it's been a mad show, a mad couple of hours, um, a, a mad couple of days, sorry. And I think it's only going to get worse over the next week. We've got, what, what date are we on? 21st of August. The window shuts on the 31st, I think, maybe the 1st of September. So we've got 10, 11 days of this. Um, but I will hopefully be doing a... Claret's Daily News Roundup every single day. Uh, this week's pretty quiet for me, if I'm being honest with you. So I should be able to get one done. Obviously, this is Wednesdays. I should be able to get one done on Thursday and Friday as well. I may even sneak one in at the weekend on Sunday if a lot of stuff happens. But obviously, with matches and things like that on, on Saturday, it doesn't tend to happen. However, next week, I'm quite busy with work. Um, so it may be a struggle on some days. But again, We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll try and get some in there. Um, but yeah, hopefully um, we get we get some stuff done and we get some players in because I understand we have a big squad. I understand that we need to cut the wage bill and we need to get some players out and, and trim the fat, as company said on Mission to Burnley too. But we're going to need to replace some of the first teamers leaving, I think. So yeah, hopefully we get Saramento. Uh, sorry, yeah, Saramento over the line and Hannibal over the line and we keep hold of the likes of Vitinho. And I still want to keep hold of O'Shea, although I do think it's unrealistic. And I, I, I don't want us to lose Hanno Misengo as well. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below of all this absolute madness of the last 48 hours. And it's only just going to be the same for the next 24, 48, 72 hours, whatever. It's going to be a mad one for the next 10 days. But yeah, um, just on a side note, um, there's quite a lot of content on the channel at the minute. I have an interview out there with um, the co-founder of Ad Hoc Films about Mission to Burnley 2. Um, that's available uh, as um, a YouTube show and a podcast. I've obviously got all the full-time content after the Cardiff win. And um, that's including the full-time show, including all the fan reactions, including Vizzy's final word as well. So quite a lot of content on the channel at the minute. And I will be interviewing a Sunderland fan Today, when you're watching this on Wednesday for the pre-game show, that will be out tomorrow. So please check it all out. But yeah, again, let me know what you think in the comments below about Sander to Fulham, JBG to Saudi Arabia, Al Dakil to Germany. We still don't know the club yet, though, unfortunately. Benson to Leeds, Norwich or Sunderland. Is Vitinho staying or is he going back to Brazil? What do you think of Saramento from Brighton? He was on loan at Ipswich last season. Uh, what about Hannibal from Manchester United? A bit of a shit house, but could it be our shit house? Hand Norma Sengo to Orcs Air? Hopefully not. O'Shea, Wolves interested now joining Brentford and Ipswich and Vout. 
We expected Vout to be out, but again, he's had a cameo in the last couple of games, and some people thought that maybe he'd be staying, but his agent did say, as I mentioned on last week's show on Friday, I think it was, that he's very likely to leave Burnley this summer. And a guy that I spoke to said, it's looking like Ajax and not Trabzon. So that's Trabzon Spore. <laughs> Easy for me to say. But yeah, I think we'll end it there because I'm stuttering and muttering now over all my words. But thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for listening. I'll be back with the Claret's Daily News tomorrow. <laughs>